What is up everyone, Zikrik here, and welcome to the Morningdale Test Facility. Rather than actually playing much New World this weekend, I spent most of my time out here testing out the blunderbuss, really trying to get a good understanding of exactly how it scales and works. So I ran a bunch of tests, collected a bunch of data, moved that data over into a spreadsheet to crunch some numbers, and then figure out a good way to visualize that data so all of us can understand the blunderbuss more effectively. I'm a mechanical engineer in real life, and so I really like to understand how things work, and I firmly believe that if you can understand something deeply, you can utilize that to be more effective at whatever it is you're trying to do. So in this case, you wanna use the blunderbuss. If you understand exactly how the blunderbuss works, how it scales with both strength and intelligence and any mix of the two, how attribute perks influence that, and then how all of that influences the abilities, you can then use this knowledge to be super effective with the blunderbuss and put together a build for yourself that fits your playstyle exactly and synergizes with whatever other weapon you're trying to use, uh, but at the same time is still very effective from a numbers standpoint. And along the way of figuring all this out, uh, I identified a pretty glaring bug with the blunderbuss that we will go over, as well as some design flaws that I think really kind of separated from the other weapons. A few months ago, I actually made a health scaling video uh, that covers this same concept, but with constitution. So if you don't know how health scales exactly in New World and you want to know, uh, you can find that on my channel page under the builds and guides section, alongside some of the older build guides I did. All right, so let's get right into it. In order to run these tests, I picked up two blunderbusses uh, blunder by Blunderby, Blunderby Tuna. I picked up two Blunderbees that were pretty much the same item level, one at 596, one at 597, with the same exact amount of base attributes on them, one int, one strength, same exact damage, and because I only have 500 expertise, it downscaled them to 548. And so I try to set up these tests to normalize everything and make sure nothing is in the way of the base numbers. So you'll see that neither of these have perks that add any extra damage. There's also no gems in them. And for my build, I literally just selected all the abilities and any other talent I got was specifically uh, to not influence damage at all. And so we're basically looking at two blunderbusses, God damn it. Two, <laughs> two guns from a uh, one strength, one int, uh, and running the same tests to calculate exactly how they scale without anything else interfering. So in your final build, uh, the gem and uh, all the extra damage you get from the passives and talents uh, within the weapon will be sort of added on top to this baseline that we're building here. So essentially what I did to run these tests is started from the bottom, now we're here. So I did strength first, and so the lowest we could go with both of these guns uh, is 32, with the attribute of the gun included, plus the base five. And so I ran this set of tests at 32 strength, and then I jumped up from there to 50, and then from there go by intervals of 50 to essentially stop and redo the tests at every new attribute perk we unlock, all the way up to as high as I could get. I went ahead and dropped some money on some legendary fish, Unfortunately, I don't have my strength or insets upgraded with Umbral Shards, and so the highest I could get was 485 with strength and 486 with int, but it's close enough to demonstrate the uh, 500 attribute splits. And so once we were maxed out with strength, basically what I did is drop enough points out of strength to increase my intelligence by intervals of 50 as well. And so we ended up dropping down to uh, 440 strength, 50 int, and then 390 strength, uh, 100 int, etc., um, all the way up until we're at max int and 50 strength. And so this is how we get a really good understanding of the perfect split of strength versus intelligence to max damage with the same amount of attributes. So as far as looking at the results, I think that is a great place to start because this is probably the most relevant question on everyone's minds is how does the strength scale versus the int if you have the same amount of attributes, just a different distribution? And so I hope everyone can see this okay. I tried to lay it out as good as I can all in one screen, uh, but this graph is essentially what we're looking at right now. This is blunderbuss scaling strength versus int. And essentially what this is showing is strength versus int distribution, and then the total damage you get from that. So this gray bar represents damage from our test results. And then the blue bar represents the amount of strength attributes and the uh, orange bar represents the amount of intelligence attribute points we have. And that's mirrored in this table down here, uh, if these numbers on the bars are actually hard to see. And so in game, uh, it says that Blunderbuss scales with strength and intelligence. Uh, if you go to the New World database, uh, which is an amazing website, by the way, it shows the Blunderbuss scaling 90% with strength and 65% with intelligence. And hopefully just from a quick glance, we can kind of see that in the numbers here. 
as far as the way this damage is sort of tearing down, the more we go from strength to intelligence. And hopefully something else that's very easy to pick out is which damage bar is the highest. And that's gonna be this 290-200 split, which is basically the 300-200 split. So that's gonna be 300 strength and 200 int. And that's gonna give you the most possible damage scaling for the blunderbuss. And if you understand musket scaling, uh, that's gonna line up with exactly how the musket scales, where if you are in a build with 300 decks, 200 int because it scales primarily with dex secondarily with int uh, that's going to give you the most possible damage with the musket and so this essentially mirrors that except with strength instead of dex and so the reason that is and the reason you're going to max out with this 300 200 split instead of just going fully strength in the primary scaled attribute is because attributes actually scale uh, better earlier on in their distribution and so basically you know going from zero to a hundred is going to be more effective, slightly more effective than going uh, from 100 to 200, and that's gonna give you slightly more damage than going from 200 to 300 and so on. Um, we're gonna get more into this in a minute, but right here, um, this is a graph of the strength scaling going from the lowest I could get 32 to the highest I could get 485 and same with int. Um, and so hopefully this sort of gives you a visual reference to what I was just saying, where you can see the curve is is quite a bit steeper at the beginning here. And then when you kind of hit 300, it sort of starts to taper off into more of a linear model. And the reason this is, is because these earlier attribute points are gonna give you slightly more damage uh, than they do once you get into uh, later parts of the distribution. And this is true for both strength and int, but because it scales uh, slightly more with strength, you can see that the curve uh, is a little more drastic uh, in the strength model. And then I think I'm gonna walk through the data a little more at the end, just everything going on in the spreadsheet uh, for anyone that's interested uh, can stick around for that. But I just wanted to provide one more way to visualize uh, this scenario of strength versus int versus this one I showed a minute ago. So this is basically, you know, if you have 485 attributes distributed uh, the whole time, and it's just showing the difference between strength having them in strength and then having them in int. This one is uh, based off of these two charts and these numbers right here. And this is essentially showing um, from, for each attribute, for the amount of attributes you have, how much does damage scale with just strength or just int. So if you have 32 attribute points distributed uh, and they were in strength, this would be your damage, 561. And if they were in int, this would be your damage, 539. And so that's these numbers right here. Um, and so this is just a visual representation essentially of for each attribute interval. So here's if you had 50 points, here's if you had 100 points, uh, what does your damage look like if all of them were in strength or if all of them were in int all the way up to as high as I could go um, at 485. And so that's 1,398 damage for your blunderbuss with strength and then 1,100. 45 damage for your blunderbuss with intelligence. And that's those are the same numbers these graphs are based off of right here. And I was able to put together a um, polynomial equation trend line to fit these. And so uh, pretty reliably, you can actually calculate how much damage you should have uh, based on your attribute number. And so I'll walk through that uh, probably at the end of the video. So if you're interested in that sort of stuff, uh, stick around for that. All right, so I think the second most important thing to understand is how the perks are gonna influence the scaling. And so keep in mind that uh, everything we've discussed so far is essentially with no perks uh, involved. And so we'll get into this a little more when I talk about uh, what I think are some of the design flaws, but the blunderbuss actually only benefits from four out of 10 of the available perks in the strength and the int tree, and only one from the strength tree. And if you compare this with most other weapons and uh, the perks available in the primary attribute that they scale with, uh, most of them take advantage of all five. And so I find it very weird that they designed the blunderbuss to only benefit from one out of five of the primary attribute perks. Um, and then it only benefits from three out of five of the secondary attribute perks. And the only one from strength that actually gives it any benefit is not a very big benefit at all. It's the 200 strength perk, and that's gonna be 10% increased damage to uh, slowed, stunned, or rooted enemies. And so the only time you're gonna be able to take advantage of that with the blunderbuss in isolation is when you hit a net shot. 
the one second root from the claw shot is just long enough for you to complete the animation of pulling toward them with the claw shot. And so it's not actually a useful root because you don't actually have time to do anything while they're rooted. And so the next thing you do after the net shot is gonna get that 10% bonus damage, but all the rest of the strength perks work off of melee attacks. And since the blunderbuss is not a melee attack, uh, it's not gonna benefit from any of those. For the int perks, it's gonna benefit from the 100 int perk, which is 10% increased crit damage. It's gonna benefit from the 150 int perk, which is 15% elemental damage. That's probably the most useful one. And then it's also gonna benefit from the 300 int perk, but actually in a really small way, especially for the auto. And so the 300 int perk is 10% on first hit of full health target, but when you shoot someone with your pellets, only one out of six of your pellets from your auto is going to benefit from that 10% increased damage uh, on health and full target. So abilities for the most part, it works like normal where the ability will benefit from that extra 10%, but for your regular attacks, uh, just shooting someone, you're gonna get virtually no benefit from that 300 in perk. So the two most useful and ones worth focusing on are the 10% increased crit damage and the 15% elemental damage. And so keep in mind that uh, of the blunderbuss abilities, three of them are physical damage, thrust, and three of them are elemental damage, fire. So your net shot, claw shot, and blast shot are all gonna be physical, thrust, and then your uh, Azoth shrapnel blast, your mortar charge, and your splitting grenade are all gonna be elemental, fire. And so they're all going to benefit from your 100 imp perk, giving you 10% increased crit damage whenever you crit any of those. But only the three fire abilities, so shrapnel blast, mortar charge, and splitting grenade, are going to benefit from the 15% increased elemental damage. Now, I want to make an important point here that all of this is without an elemental gem. And so if you end up going with an elemental gem, which I think is intelligent, if you're going the intelligence route, you are going to get 15% increased damage on the half of your weapon that scales with int. And this is now going to apply to your three physical uh, thrust attacks as well. So your net shot, your claw shot, and your blast shot, half of that damage is all gonna be increased by 15% as well. But the int gem shouldn't really influence your three abilities that are already elemental fire um, because those are already increased by the 15%. And so that's a way to bring the int scaling up closer to the strength scaling. But keep in mind from a pure numbers perspective, the strength scaling still trumps because you don't have to use an elemental gem with strength. You can use another gem option to get additional bonus damage on top of the good scaling with strength already. So personally, I think some really good options are gonna be the Jasper with the recent changes to it, especially if you're rocking uh, another melee weapon, you know, like a great axe or a hammer. I think an opal would be a really good option and it's just a very versatile gem in general. Um, and then I also think that if you're using the blunderbuss to try to execute enemies after they get out of melee range, the uh, emerald could be a really good choice for that as well uh, with the opportunist giving you 20% increased damage on stuff less than 30% health. All right, so now we're gonna take a deeper look at the specific ability scaling. Um, the graph I showed earlier up here, this was the damage of the blunderbuss as a whole uh, for strength and int. And so down here, this is the same idea, but for um, each specific ability. And so, Essentially what I had to do here is normalize the data um, of the actual shots to account for anything that was in the way uh, that would have basically given it a bonus or a decrease. And so for example, uh, when I was at 32 attributes, I had no other gear on and so I was in light armor. And so that's where you see this armor multiply over here. And so these normalized numbers are basically um, from the normalized, uh, part up here and basically what we're doing is we're multiplying or we're dividing the actual number by the 20% increase we get by the light armor to get the normalized number and then same thing you know with medium and then same thing with heavy which ends up being the same number because it's just one and so this gives us a way to basically remove anything that I couldn't remove in the actual test phase to give us normalized data that we can actually compare without some erroneous thing uh, being in the way, essentially. And I did the same thing uh, with the perks in this normalized data, and that's why these normalized numbers um, are you know, smaller than these uh, actual numbers. And you can see here, it's sort of color-coded um, so that I can tell uh, what perk is affecting what number. And so you can see like when we hit 150 in going down, 
Um, that's when this 150 int perk kicks in, 300 int, and then this is both of those two stacked. Um, so just to give you guys an idea of kind of what we're looking at here. All right, so so going down to the abilities, the first one we're gonna look at is net shot, and net shot and hook shot are basically the same. They both do 40% weapon damage. And what I was trying to do here is essentially calculate the uh, what the damage of the ability should be based off of the weapon number. And so, you know, if you have 561 blunderbuss uh, weapon damage at 32 strength, you should be able to, if you multiply that by 40% right here, you should be able to calculate exactly what the damage of net shot should be. And so that's what I did here. And so here's the calculated value of net shot for strength. And then here's the actual value of net shot for strength. And then I took the difference of those two and then here's the percent difference. And this is the beautiful magic, the beautiful random magic of math is you find out all kinds of weird shit uh, that you didn't know before. And this tells us that that dummy that I was shooting, that target dummy has 5% physical resistance. So there you go. And you can see it's consistent. The difference is, is different, but the percent difference is consistent. And so that tells us that our calculation is spot on. And that also tells us that the calculation under the hood for the game engine is working just like the tooltip says it should. And so that's good. Um, this is good that these are all the same percent difference. And you can see with int, we have a couple discrepancies, um, but those discrepancies are consistent throughout the data. And so you see you have these two six, these two six, these two six. And then when you come down to these, uh, so these are the physical abilities with thrust. And then when you come down to the um, uh, elemental abilities, uh, it's same thing where um, with the strength, we have consistent 5%. And then we have a little bit of discrepancy uh, in the uh, difference for the intelligence uh, calculation, but the, but the discrepancies are consistent in the difference. And so basically what this tells me in general is that the weapon scaling for all the abilities of the blunderbuss is working as intended um, and is working as the tooltip should say. And so that's pretty cool. And we also now know that target dummies have 5% resistance and looks like maybe a little more, maybe like 6% elemental resistance. Um, anyways, I digress a bit. So taking a look at net shot and hook shot. And so here's the graphs of net shot and hook shot scaling. And so you can see um, in general, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a very similar scaling to the overall scaling of the blunderbuss. And that makes a lot of sense because it's just 40% of the blunderbuss scaling and pretty much same thing for blast shot um, and this is just 70 percent instead of 40 percent but you can see it pretty much follows the same uh, pattern here as the um, as the base blunderbuss and so these are the three uh, physical uh, abilities and then we go down to the elemental abilities and we have um, a little bit more going on and basically the, the reason that is is because the uh, on the int scaling the perks are going to influence these ones. Um, whereas up here, because these three are thrust physical, they're not gonna benefit from the 150 imp perk like we talked about. And um, the 10% uh, increased damage on full health target, you know, it's a pretty specific scenario and it's only a 10% increase. So I didn't think that's really worth showing or talking about, but we will talk about that down here um, because these are our, our three elemental fire abilities. And so I basically wanted to show a comparison where again, these ability scaling graphs look uh, about the same uh, as far as the pattern as these three and as our main one up here, because these are just percent damages off of the uh, you know weapon scaling. So 58% for shrapnel blast, 85% for splitting grenade, 100% for mortar charge. But then the cool shit is when you have those perks in effect, so as soon as you hit 150 int, you're actually gonna get a nice jump uh, in these abilities damage um, because they are elemental. And so you can see here, as soon as you hit 150, uh, as opposed to these with the normalized data, when you take the perk into account, which when you hit 150 in is always gonna be in effect for these abilities, you're actually gonna jump up to almost the same damage uh, as the strength scaling. And it's, it's like that until you hit uh, 300 int. And then I wanted to show what it would look like if you were doing them on a full health target with the 15%. Uh, so you can see here, this is um, basically the, our normalized uh, int blast shot right here, multiplied by 15%. And then, so that's these three. And then we go down and this one is the same thing, um, except we add 10% uh, 
because we're pretending it's at full health for the 300 imp perk. And so you can see that if you have those two imp perks stacked and you're shooting someone with these abilities at full health, uh, you can actually exceed the strength scaling uh, damage wise. And again, this is with no um, gems on either side. This is just raw damage plus those two imp perks. And so I thought that was pretty cool and I thought that was worth showing. So if you hear anyone say that um, int scaling works better for some abilities and strength scaling works better for some abilities, that's true to an extent. Just understand that at a baseline, you know, they scale the same as the base weapon pretty much. But um, when you consider the perks involved and if you're at 300 plus int or 150 plus int, uh, that can definitely be true because you're getting a nice 15% uh, damage boost uh, to these elemental abilities. And then if you hit someone at full health, it's an extra 25% because you get the 10% from the 300 perk and the 15% from the elemental perk. So that is basically uh, what I have to say about the abilities. All right, so now we're gonna go over the bug and some of the design flaws that I think are sort of inherent in the blunderbuss right now. So the bug I found was essentially that the grenade, um, when it crits, uh, it will not benefit from the additional 15% crit damage that a crit is supposed to give you. So the number will show up orange, but it will just be uh, the same exact number as the normal white uh, damage number. And I was able to reproduce this many times. And an interesting thing that does happen is once you have the uh, 100 int perk that gives you 10% crit damage, when you crit the grenade, uh, it will benefit from that 10% increased crit damage, but it's still only 10% on top of the base number. And so instead of being 125% crit, uh, it's just 110% crit because you're getting the bonus from the perk, but you're not benefiting from the 15% crit damage. And so I just wanted to document that and I will submit a formal bug report uh, on the forums to hopefully get this looked into by the devs and corrected. And then from a design flaw standpoint, I talked about it earlier, but I just think it's very, um, what's the right word? You're basically leaving a lot on the table um, from a design perspective by not allowing the weapon to benefit or interact with uh, the majority of the perks uh, for the two attributes that it scales with. And so four out of 10 perks is what it can benefit from. That's uh, less than the majority. And so I think a potential change to this might be um, changing the way the strength perks work to affect strength weapons instead of just melee abilities. And that would include uh, the blunderbuss. Uh, so we would be able to benefit from most of those strength perks. And then the other thought is that uh, dexterity perks were essentially designed for ranged weapons. And so when you look at the dexterity perks, uh, they would literally all help the blunderbuss. And so 5% chance to critical hit, that would help the blunderbuss. 5% thrust damage, that would help the blunderbuss. Uh, dodges cost 10 less stamina. You know, it doesn't directly help the blunderbuss, but still a useful perk for pretty much any weapon. 10% uh, bonus backstab and headshot damage. The blunderbuss can headshot, so it would benefit from that. 10% bonus critical hit damage on stunned, slowed, or rooted enemies. And so this is a similar scenario to the 200 strength perk that it does benefit from that we discussed earlier, except that's just flat damage. This is crit damage. And then guaranteed critical hit after the dodge, that would definitely benefit the blunderbuss as well, or any DPS weapon really. And so it's just interesting to me that all the dex perks would apply, um, yet it doesn't scale at all with dex. And basically none of the strength perks apply, but it does scale with strength. And I'm not saying I don't like the decision for it to scale with strength. I think the strength kit could definitely use some variability away from just the great ax hammer meta. I also think it's cool having a ranged weapon in the strength tree but I think it might be worth looking at reworking those strength perks to include strength weapons instead of just melee attacks so that the blunderbuss could actually benefit from the perks um, in a cool way because it just kind of feels bad not benefiting from the main stat you're in. And then from an ability standpoint, uh, I was really excited when I read some of these abilities and then the way they actually felt in game didn't really measure up to my expectations. Um, for example, the claw shot, the way it reads, it sounds like you could attach that to the ground or a wall and pull yourself that distance. And it doesn't have a very long range. And so rather than kind of being just a meh ability, I think it could be a really cool and really fun mobility tool that lives in the strength kit. And so all of the strength users that bitch about the mobility in the dex kit, this would be a really cool strength scaling mobility tool that they could use to try to catch up 
to the range targets that they're chasing. And I do think that the strength kit could use a boost in mobility. And since stagger's not in the game anymore, melee users really struggle to connect uh, with mages and with ranged users a lot of the time. And so I just think uh, having the claw shot actually be able to grapple onto the ground or onto a wall could really increase the skill cap of the blunderbuss and make it a much more versatile weapon and give strength users a way to close the gap other than just landing the shot directly on someone and pulling them toward it. And then on that note, the root uh, is essentially, uh, I don't want to call it a useless root, but you as a player will be able to do nothing in that one second root to your opponent because by the time the animation of the claw shot finishes, uh, they are out of the root. And so that brings me to the point of combos where uh, there's really no combos you can sort of pull off with this kit. And a lot of other weapons in the game have some really beautiful combos between things you can set up. Um, and I know the ranged weapons, um, you know, like bow and musket don't necessarily have cool, you know, sort of combos you can do. But I think the blunderbuss is sort of more of a of a close range, like, you know, ranged hybrid. It would be really cool if you could combo some of the abilities together. For example, if you could hook shot into a net shot and guarantee that because you know, maybe it was a two second route instead of a one second route. Or I'm not saying increase the route. I'm not necessarily a fan of roots, but like basically what I'm saying is it would be cool if you could combo the abilities together and there's really nothing you can do to guarantee a combo um, like you can with sword and shield or with spear or with great axe where you just gravity well and do anything. And so that's just something to think about from a design perspective. But despite all this, I definitely still think it's a cool weapon and still has a lot of potential. And that is all I got for you. Um, I am totally gassed from making this. It took me forever. I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope it was useful. And I hope everyone has a great time using the blunderbuss. And I hope you have an even greater time now that you understand it to a silly degree. <laughs> so I hope you're having a good day and night wherever you are. Um, take care and I will see you in the next one. Peace.